29, John chapter 1. It says, surely he has borne our griefs. He's carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. It says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. It says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the inequity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He, brought, he was brought as a lamb to slaughter. And as a sheep before the shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. Okay, so he opened not his mouth so we can open ours. Amen. Amen. See, the thing is, he didn't open his mouth because he was trying to take on all that we, the price that, that, that we really deserved. If he opened his mouth, he wouldn't have took on the price. See, because creative power would have came out. <laughs> if he opened his mouth, he'd have shut the whole thing down just by saying something. So he's like, no, nah, I'm just going to take this for them. But he's freed us to open our mouths. So what are we saying? Are we saying what he's afforded us to have? Are we saying what the adversary wants us to see? The false evidence of being real. Are we using our words to harmonize with the, the picture that the adversary has given us? Or are we using our words to harmonize with his report says? Whose report shall we believe? Shall we see to a point of expressing its creative manifestation in this world? That's what a believe. See, when I believe, I see. We, uh, we, we believe and therefore we speak. Right? So, so am I speaking what I believe based on what God says, or I'm speaking what the adversary wants me to, wants me to believe? And that's the false evidence of being real, real, trying to make it more tragic than it is. So look, it says he was wounded. He was injured and hurt for our transgressions. Our transgressions, our rebellion. Um, uh, that, that to transgress is to seek independence from communion uh, and actually reaching the goal of separation. <laughs> Right. So 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 he was wounded for our, or injured for us separating ourselves from God. It's, he was bruised. That means beaten for our inequities, our perverseness. Perversion. See, we were designed to be creators, not perverters, not 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 twisted or wicked. Right. We were designed to to create. To, so anytime we're um, Speaking that false evidence appearing real, we're perverting what God has. When we allow fear to have us to amplify the negative, we're twisted. It's, it's, it's a perversion. Because we're designed to, we were sent in this earth when this craziness and this darkness and, and uh, debt, lack, disconsent, craziness, when it starts to manifest, it should place a demand on us. To speak God's creative word by faith. So are we rolling like that? All creation waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Waiting for us to start to speak God's uh, desire into existence. But you can't do that if you're consuming yourself with the world. and Because the, the world have you thinking about fears, worst case scenarios. So he's bruised for our inequities, our, our perverseness. Look, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we were healed. See, see again, they said he took 40. Yeah, they said 40. All right, well, back in the Jewish times, um, um, that, you know, 40 was a part of the, you know, okay, you took 40 lashes for whatever, but if they said if you break down all the things that we take on, it adds up to 40. <laughs> so it was a stripe for everything you could deal with. And uh, I, I know this is just a, a, a movie, but this particular movie, I don't think that the, the person that did the movie I don't think it was them. It was God using them. This was the Passion of Christ, probably one of the greatest movies I've ever seen to depict, depict uh, you know, what we talk about. But this, this, this scene stood out for me. Actually, I, I, think I was doing fine until somebody asked me how I was doing when I came out of the movie. I just broke down and cried. I was like, we're so selfish. You know, like, like, but I watched this scene where he was getting beat. And so he's beating him and he's beating him and he fell. So, if that was me, I'd have played dead. 
<laughs> like, good, good. Like, you know, if they think I'm dead, then maybe that's to stop beating me. <laughs> Jesus got up. He got up because he, because the Lord showed me. Oh no, no, I haven't taken enough stripes for them yet. No, no, no. There's, there's more. Almost like, oh no, no, no. We're not finished. <laughs> We're not finished. I mean, it was, the meat was coming out of his back. No, he wanted to make sure he took on everything. See, guess we've been twisted. But he paid the price for that. Yeah, yes, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. He took on everything. Ooh, so we could live. So we could speak and create again. It's hard to create something that hasn't existed when you're you're consumed or you've conformed to the world and all you see is what they tell you. The false evidence appearing real. It's hard to, it's, it's hard to speak opposite of what, if you've consumed something negative. I used to watch these young guys that come to church and they spend their whole day listening to secular music and then praise and worship would go forth and they would be like, almost like somebody wrapped them in some type of a, you know, uh, remember Lazarus? He was la wrapped in the, womb, in the tomb, and, and they said they had to unwrap him. You know, but they look like they in the they they Lazarus before <laughs> they unwrapped him. They be, you ever see them that can't raise their hands? Can't like somebody got them lock and key? Well, it's hard to even pick up the sensitivity of God's praise and 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 the love for God through worship when you've been consumed with the world. Just like it's hard for you to speak life and light. When you're consuming darkness, Amen. worst case scenarios. It's, it's almost. It's, it's, it, you want. You ever been in a situation where you want to pray? I use me. I was traveling with a team. I'm probably going to end here, and um, um, so again, I'm trying to pursue professionals. So this particular team, you you go on a college tour, so people get to see you because you're playing against these Division One schools and playing some some uh, semi pro teams. So. Now, I'm just getting serious about God. Some of you have heard this before. And so when I stepped out to go uh, to the, the drop-off location where we was going to travel, the, I, the Holy Spirit was telling me, get back in the car. But I, I pretend I didn't hear him. Like, you know, like, that probably wasn't the Holy Spirit. Because <laughs> this, this is my opportunity to get a look. So I said to myself, so immediately, you know how we uh, try to override. Yeah, I'm going to minister to these people. I'm going to minister to these people. But that really was the panic of knowing that I wasn't supposed to take the trip. Right? So, so it was like a humility tour. I, it was like Superman around Kryptonite. And I remember being in a hotel. I just wasn't me. And I said, well, y'all need to uh, pray. I couldn't pray. I said, okay, okay, okay. I know what to do. I just read the word. That's a good one. I opened the Bible. I couldn't read. See, because I was consumed by more of the world. And I, I was closer to the world than I was to the world at the time. I'm just fresh out the pack, maybe like a year, um, a year serious. Give me a year and a half. Still, well, a year serious based on the information I knew, which was traditional. So I, you can't even count, count that as a real year. It's probably like really three months if you really, if you extract, <laughs> extract it, I'll try to get the best Christian out of me. Probably three months. Right. So and that's what happens. We consume the world, but we think we're going to speak out the word with power. And then so we get into situations. Where is God? God going, where are you? Your faith makes you whole. Every aspect's covered. You have the power to speak life and light to situations. But you can't do that when you've taken my word for granted. See, Jeremiah, when he said, man, I ain't saying nothing no more. I get too much heat. I, I have a friend, a close friend that I mentor, uh, a football guy. He was like, well, it seems like every time I come to church, something crazy happens. <laughs> he said, so I figure if I stay away from church, but I keep acknowledging God, <laughs> you know. And, and the thing is, that's what Jeremiah was saying. But he said, you know what? I tried it. He says, but his word was in me. It was like fire. Shut up in my bones. He says, I couldn't. I couldn't, like, hold it back. He said, I had to say it. I had to bring it out. See, I, I, he was consuming it to a point where any time he got into a situation where the truth needed to free somebody. You know, where there needed to be light and life. Where there needed to be some creative power. He couldn't help it. It came out. And that's, that's, that's how we, that's what happens and that's how we operate. Jesus paid the price for that. 
for our oppression when we're overloaded. He took the overload. When we're afflicted, when we're tormented, he took the torment. And he, he dealt with it by, by sealing his creative power to free our creative power. Now are we using it? All right, so what did we learn today? We'll, we'll kind of end there. Um, enemy. So that's why he's trying to heal us so yeah. the enemy can't use us against ourselves and against others. Because, you know, you speak curses into people's life and curses to, I, to, the, I, the curses to yourself. I tell the kids when they be cursing, I say, now, why would you curse yourself? He said, what are you talking about? I said, well, you're snared by the words of your mouth. So every time you're cussing, you think you're cussing them out. But what you're doing is you're speaking out cursing around you. First of all, you read what you sow. I said, so why would you curse yourself like that? And he was looking at me like, okay, I wasn't thinking that. Well, why would you tell me that? So now I got to feel bad that I did it. But <laughs> that's the whole point. Like, well, where does that come from? I said, oh, I can't deal with that ugly. You stop the ugly, and then maybe I can talk to you. Right? You see what I'm saying? So when we're healed, we're no, carrier, we're no longer carriers uh, uh, for him and of him. Right? Um, All right, so what do we learn today? Let's start with the people uh, on. Thanks for tuning into Airs TV. The completion of this video or entire audio can be accessed at our website at www.heirscc.org or on Airs CCC channel, YouTube, and Airs Radio via SoundCloud and iTunes. Donations can be given at our website. Thank you. Remember, at Ayers, we believe we're just what you prayed for.